Hey everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and about a month ago I conducted a workshop with a medium-sized organization here in Florida on using Google Drive in a business setting. They had just migrated from Microsoft Office to Google Apps and specifically Google Drive and they basically called me in for a full day to hold a workshop and I also gave a keynote presentation on what it's like to use Google Drive in a business setting. Now this was the first one of my presentations, live presentations that I actually video recorded. So the quality is not great in terms of the actual video capture, but the audio is pretty good and I actually have a copy of the presentation I used. And I just want to share that with all of my viewers because I know that a lot of you are using Google Apps either for your own business or for the business that you're working with. So I think this could be some very valuable information to everybody and I hope it helps. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section below and if you enjoy the presentation, I'd love a thumbs up here on YouTube and if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials as always please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. Actually it's, I'm, I'm really excited that you're all moving to Google Drive because about three years ago now I was hired as an IT administrator for a publication company in Tampa and it was a company of about 70 employees on site and about 110, 120 employees internationally and just a couple months after I got hired the uh, chief information officer and myself decided to move the entire company to Google Drive, Google Apps, Gmail, same thing that you're all doing. And so I, I've been through this process, we've I actually, just in November, kind of, I moved to Fort Lauderdale and decided to break away and I'm now just pursuing my own business. But I was there for three years and we oversaw the migration. And it, you know, at first I actually thought it was gonna be a lot more difficult than it really was mm -hmm. because we've all been using Microsoft Office for the last 25 years, 20 years, I guess. And uh, it was actually a lot easier. And I think that this is, this is the most difficult time right now because you have all these documents, all these files that you've been working with for a number of years and you're getting those migrated, you're converting them and there might be some conversion issues and some of the documents you might have to recreate. And I was telling Ken, it gets a lot easier once you are creating all of those documents within Google Drive and, and, and you're comfortable with the system. So six months down the road, it's going to be much easier than it is now and, and it might not even be that difficult right now either. Um, so currently, like I said, I'm pursuing my own business. I do a lot of uh, digital marketing, search engine optimization, publishing on the web, YouTube, and I also have a number of clients that I administer their Google Apps for Enterprise with, and I do Google Apps training. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at. A little bit of an overview. I just want to mention, obviously I'm here for Google Drive, Google Docs, but I want to mention Google Apps um, because Google Apps integrates all of the different mail, the collaboration features, Google Drive, Google Calendar. Uh, I don't know if any of you have heard of the Google Apps Marketplace, but there's a number of other apps that are similar to you know, the uh, App Store on your iPhone or Android, where you can uh, customer relationship management systems, time tracking systems, all these different things that can integrate, and they integrate with Google Drive and Gmail and Google Calendar. The other thing that's happening is Google's strategy right now as a company is changing a little bit, because traditionally for the last six or seven years, they've just been buying up all these little startup companies, all these little services, Picasa, the image service, they've got the, the Google cars out in California right now, the self-driven cars, they've got energy plants, they've got everything. They just, they don't want to have this monopoly in one specific industry, they just want their foot in the door and everything. And so what they've started to do in the last year or so is they've started to integrate those services. So YouTube, they own YouTube, I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, but it used to be that you have a YouTube profile and a Google profile, and even though Google owned it, you could have separate profiles. Well, you can't do that anymore. If you have a YouTube account, it has to be linked directly to your Google account. So they're really connecting all of these services, and that makes them work together a lot better. So uh, you're going to see that in the future as you continue to use Google Apps, the services are going to become more integrated, and, and they're going to work better together. And also another cool thing that's happening is, let's see, the pace of adopting Google Apps for organizations is increasing rapidly too. I, I almost see more companies nowadays that use Google Apps than companies that use Outlook. And it's really cool because um, at first, and, and you're going to have to do a lot of this when you're dealing with clients and vendors right now, 
a lot of your documents are going to be in Google format, and then you're going to have to convert them into Microsoft Office, or you're going to receive a Microsoft Office file, and you're going to have to convert it to Google. Well, down the road, that's slowly going to shift, and you're going to be working with more and more organizations that also use Google Apps, and you're not going to have to convert, and you're going to be able to collaborate with them in real time, like you're going to do right now, internally. So um, that's something else to kind of look forward to with Google Apps. Uh, Google Drive specifically, uh, some of you might kind of know this, but it, it has three, at least in my opinion, three core functions, and that is word processing, file storage, and collaboration. So traditionally, you have Microsoft Office, which is your word processing suite. Then you've got your operating system or a server somewhere, which is how you manage all your files. And then you've got your email and your video chat and, and all those systems for collaboration. With Google Apps and Google Drive, they're all linked together. So the same place that you create and edit your documents is where you're organizing them and storing them, which is the same place where you're sharing them with each other and working together. So it really brings everything together. And as I mentioned, they're continuing to do that even more right now. Um, so that's really the main functions that Google Drive provides uh, for you. And then the benefits that you get as an, or as an organization is you can access it from anywhere. So those days of emailing yourself attachments, putting files on flash drives, take, having to take your laptop. You might notice, I don't know if you know this, but this isn't my laptop. Mm -hmm. It's Ken's laptop. I, ha I did bring my computer just in case, but I didn't need it because this is a Google presentation. I can access it from the in Internet Cafe in Toronto, Canada right now if I wanted to. Uh, so that really helps a lot. Uh, your computer dies. You can just pick up your friend's computer and you can access all your stuff. Um, so real-time collaboration, we mentioned that. I think, Ken, you mentioned that people have already been doing that, working on the same document at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's awesome, right? Yeah. Has everybody seen that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. The SR, our senior team have been doing it a lot. Like last night we were working on the same file, and you could just see where everyone was and what changes yeah. they're making. It's pretty wild. And have you, have you all seen the revision history as well? Yes. Yeah, yes. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like that's, that's at first you're like, well, everybody can edit these files, yeah. but what if they decide to do something bad and then the revision history? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And one of the big reasons, just to let you know, that we went with uh, this system, we used to VPN, mm -hmm. and we always had problems. Anybody working from home mm -hmm. couldn't get in or it to the server. was slow and yeah. yeah, all of that. So this was, we wanted something that we could access anywhere. Yeah, that, I mean, to me, that's the biggest thing. You know, you just log into your account, boom, everything's there. So, um, and then another benefit is file security. And I think this is the one that a lot of people originally feel like there might be less file security by moving to the cloud because the cloud is accessible from anywhere. Um, but in reality, first of all, Google is a data-driven company. They work with data. That's all they do is collect data and store it and secure it. So. Um, you can bet that they're spending a lot of money on making sure that their data is encrypted, their, your documents are encrypted, your emails are encrypted, and everything is secure from a sense of hackers and that kind of thing. And then the other thing is that uh, their core competency is storing data, so it's, it's redundant. Your data is backed up a thousand times, and the chances that all of Google's servers go down and all of your stuff is lost compared to the chances that a server in this building goes down are much, much less. You know, if there's a fire and your server goes down, you don't have an off-site backup, you're in trouble. Google's got data centers all over the world, and so your, your data is going to be there. And one way, you know, if they had a, a huge, huge catastrophe, they, it might take 24 hours to get your data back, but it'll, it'll get back. Um, and then the Google Apps Marketplace, I kind of mentioned that earlier, um, that allows you to use other services. Uh, probably down the road, once you're a little more comfortable, that link together with your Drive and your Gmail and your calendars and all that sort of thing. Uh, so that's another benefit. Um, kind of this, this slide gets a little bit more detailed, but I, I want to mention this before we start getting into specific examples because I think this can be kind of confusing with Google Drive, and that's the different file formats. Because uh, there's really there's many types of formats of files you can put in Google Drive, but I kind of separate it into two, and that's either Google format or a different format. Uh, because a lot of times people get confused, you know, they'll upload an Excel spreadsheet and it won't be converted. And then they're like, well, why can't I edit this online? And they don't realize that they have to convert it. Um, so it can kind of be confusing. So 
for the Google format, those are the ones that you can edit online. Those are the ones that you can collaborate with, that you can see other people you know, working on it at the same time as you. But you have to have a Google account. Now, you could share a file with a client, and if they had a personal Google account, you could share it with their personal Google, they could log in, and they could edit it and look at it. But it's not really how you're going to want to do things, because you're going to want them to access it with their business account. So, in order to do that, you're going to have to convert the file to Excel or PDF or Word or whatever format they use. And we can talk about that when we get hands-on here a little bit later. Uh, but Google Drive as a file storage utility can store just about any type of file. You can upload video files, you can upload music files, you can upload text, um, image files, anything you want. It doesn't just have to be Word, Excel, PowerPoint. It can pretty much be anything. Um, so you almost have to separate the two, even though you create files and edit files in the same place that you store your files, you almost have to step, separate those two concepts and think about, well, okay, if I'm uploading an image, it's just stored here, and then if I'm creating a document, that's a whole, I'm getting into a whole different part of Google Drive here. Does that make sense? Most part. <laughs> Let me know if, I'm, I'm, if you need clarification on anything, please feel free to interrupt. Um, so shared folders, it's good to see that Ken has been implementing those and, and you've been using those. I put this in here because for organizations, this is a feature that can really save a lot of time and a lot of headache and frustration uh, and confusion because, especially if you're hiring new employees or um, you're switching departments around, uh, let's say you have 20, and especially now because you're, you're migrating all your files, so you guys have a lot of files that need to be shared with different people. If you've got 20 files and they all need to be shared with the same five people, instead of going to each file individually and hitting share and then adding those 20 people, then go to the next file, share, adding those people, you can just create one folder and you can share that folder with the 10 people. And you can decide, do they need edit permissions or view permissions, just like you can on a regular file. And then you can just select all 20 of your files and drop them in that folder. And it will automatically, the permissions will propagate to everybody who the folder is shared with. So all of a sudden, you get a new team member on the sales team. Instead of having to go into those 20 files and add that person to each file, you just add that team member to the folder share. And all of a sudden, those 20 files will pop up in their drive or in the share with me section. So does that make sense? So that, that definitely adds a lot. Um, it increases organizational efficiency. Um, some of the challenges. So as Ken mentioned, I don't work for Google. And there, you know, with any system that you use, whether it's word processing, collaboration, or an accounting system, uh, there's going to be limitations, and there's going to be things that don't work exactly how you need them to or, or want them to. You can usually find a way. Um, so I want to mention those because those are important uh, for you to understand up front so that when you come into a situation where you face one of those challenges, you kind of can figure out, well, you know it's a challenge. You can kind of try and work around it or find another solution. Um, so... Working with Microsoft Office users, I kind of debated with myself after I put that on there because it's not really working with the users that is the challenge. It's um, the whole file conversion situation. And as you get used to that, it's going to become second nature. It's going to be really easy. It is for me at least and, and for a lot of people I've worked with uh, who aren't tech people. Okay, uh, But at first, it's going to be confusing, a little more confusing when you receive an Excel file. You're going to have to make the decision. Do I need to edit this file? Do I need it in Google format? If you do, then you're going to have to convert it so you can edit it. But at the same time, maybe you just want to view it exactly how they sent it. You don't need to edit it. You can keep it in Excel format. So there, a lot of the what you're going to be doing with the conversions and stuff, it's situational. And it's up to the organization, too. It's up to, to Ken and, and everybody else here who, you know, are we going to convert all of our files? If that's a policy, then that's what it is. Uh, but you're definitely going to run into some of those challenges with the file conversion. And the same with sending files. Um, I've already been talking about a couple Excel files here this morning, and I think that one of the first questions that people have when switching to Docs or, or one of the first challenges they face is, well, I converted this file, but it didn't convert 100% correctly. And it does. it's not always going to convert 100% correctly. I will tell you that the files that don't have very complex formatting, if they're just, you know, a simple, if you had like a three paragraph letter, it's going to convert almost 100%, probably 
Um, the only time where it might be a little different is if you have a header with like a, a letter head or something. It might the margin might be a little different. Um, but the more complex of a file you have, the more things can get kind of messed up in the in the conversion. So uh, as you work with different files, because you know I don't necessarily know what all of your files look like. I don't know what all of your business processes are like, but you do. And as you convert documents, you might notice every time I convert a document that has X, it gets screwed up. So unfortunately, you know the best option might be to change X before you convert it, maybe not use that feature that you've been using, or after you convert it, you might have to go in and make a few little changes. Uh, but where it's going to get a lot easier, like I mentioned earlier, is when you are creating these documents from Drive, from the beginning, and you don't have to go through that conversion process. Um, and so then when you send documents out, um, you have the option of, of sending them in an Excel format, open office format, PDF format, you can also do text files and stuff like that. Um, so that's definitely some of the challenges with file conversion. We can talk about those today. Word processing limitations. This hasn't been too much of an issue, but I, I can envision it for certain people. If you're a super power user of Microsoft Word and you're using all of the really advanced features, some of those features might not be available in Google Docs. Now, at the same time, Google Docs might have some features that Microsoft Word doesn't have. Uh, I will say, however, um, this can also be a benefit because I think it was 2007 is when Microsoft updated to that new version of Word, and it's got the four different main sections, and then within each section, there's all the different choices. And to me, it's just too much information, and I couldn't find things. And going back to Google Docs was like a simplified version. And it was to me, it was more efficient. I could find what I'm looking for, I could do it, and be done instead of having to search for half an hour. So it kind of depends on how you use it. This could be a, a challenge or a benefit. Um, and then constant updates. Uh, I think that this is definitely something that traditional users of Microsoft Office it takes a little while to get used to. But it's the way technology is going nowadays, not just with Google Drive, with any cloud-based service. There being Rapid application development is what it's called. These applications are being developed as you use them on the fly. And um, with Google Drive and just Google Apps in general, there will be a day, some days, lots of days, when you walk in and all of a sudden something's a little different. Something's moved a little better. There's a new feature um, or a label has changed. You know, Google Drive didn't used to even be called Google Drive. It was Google Docs. And I don't know if you've seen that activity section in Google Drive. Has anybody seen that? Mm -hmm. That used to be called Home. And all of a sudden, one day we came in and it was activity. So that those things are going to happen, and um, unfortunately, you just kind of got to roll with it. If they do release a really big update, the administrator can will be notified uh, beforehand, and it'll give him the option, or at least in the past, this is what they've done. Who knows? Maybe they'll update their process of updating. I don't know. But um, Ken will be given the option to let's hold off on this feature for a little while until we're ready, or let me just try it out myself and use it for a little bit. So those real big updates, there will be a little bit of time. But for the most part, the world we live in nowadays isn't the type of world where we can say, okay, in six months we're going to be releasing version 1.1, here are 10 pages of notes on version 1.1, and then have five press releases leading up to the release of this update. That's too slow. The technology is moving way faster than that. Um, so when you use these cloud services, they're going to update at the speed that technology is updating. So um, just kind of be aware of that as we move through. Um, so that kind of it's kind of my overview, general stuff that I wanted to just get us all on the same page with. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we get to specific things about anything we just talked about? Right.